Good morning, church. Matthew chapter 9, starting in verse 18. While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a certain woman, which had a, which had a disease with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him round about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Faith that won't quit. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask you to anoint preach. Anoint those that will listen to understand, to comprehend. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm. The story of the woman with the issue of blood. Mm. Different parts of scripture say that she had been struggling with this and that she had spent everything she owned and was not yet better, but in fact was worse. And no doubt at this time, she had heard about the fame of Jesus. She had heard about the fame of Jesus and she was hoping that maybe she would come to her, he would come to her town. Sure enough, he comes to her town. And while he's on his way to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, this woman stops him dead in his tracks. He's on his way to perform another miracle. The crowd of people are, are thronging him. And she reaches up and touches the hem of his garment. And she says within herself, if I can just touch his garment, I will be made whole. One of the other gospels says of this story that the minute she reached up and touched his garment, Jesus felt power or virtue go out of him. This woman believed that he was able to heal her just by touching his garment. She had had this issue of blood 12 years. Spent money trying to get it fixed. Spent everything she had trying to get it to no longer bother her. And then none of them could help. None of them could help. She was literally becoming desperate. And she somehow heard that Jesus was coming to her town. And she reasoned in herself, probably for days, if I can just touch him. And she wakes up that morning, he's supposed to be in town with an anticipation. Today's my day. And she looks out her window and she sees Jesus. And she sees him thronged with people. They were so packed in that, that she thought to herself, how can I get to Jesus? But her faith would not allow her to quit. She had to try to get to Jesus. Some scholars believe, looking this up, researching this, 
that she literally started walking toward him and the crowds were so massive that they ended up knocking her to the ground. Most people at that point would have said enough. I can't, it's, it's not God's will. I can't do this. Not today. Maybe he'll come back. But she wouldn't take no for an answer. She literally crawled, scholars believe, on her hands and knees to get to Jesus. And she lifts up her eyes and she sees one of the tassels on his clothes. And she reaches up and grabs one of those tassels. And Jesus stops dead in his tracks. And one of the, I believe it's Mark, says, he turns around and he says, who touched me? Who touched me? Keep in mind, he's being thronged with people. And one of his disciples, they say, everybody's touching you. And you're saying, you're asking who touched you? And he says, yes, because I felt power go out of me. Her faith would not quit. She had been told by doctors for 12 years, we can't help you. No doubt she had probably laid night after night after night in, in pain, but yet seeking the Lord. Lord, send me an answer. Send me an answer. And then when the Lord seemingly does answer that prayer, she wakes up that morning and she sees Jesus walking and he's being thronged with people. And my thought process would have been, he's here, but how am I going to get to him? He's being, he's got people all around him. There's no way I can get to him. But yet, she reasoned in her mind, I've got to get to Jesus. Despite the crowd, despite everything else, I have got to get to Jesus. Church, are we that desperate? Are we that desperate to get to him no matter the cost, no matter what obstacles we may face? Or do we say, oh, well, maybe he'll come back to my area. Maybe another day. Today's not the day. See, had this woman took that attitude and that approach, she more than likely would have never gotten healed. But because she had already made up in her heart and made up in her mind, I'm going to get to Jesus. I don't care what it takes. I know he's being, he's got people all around him. I know that it's probably dangerous for me to push my way through this crowd of people. Y'all look at it. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. Some sort of bleeding issue. When you bleed enough, what happens? You lose energy. But yet, even in her possibly weakened state, she said, I've got to get to Jesus. For if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Not I might. See, she had already reasoned in her mind, if I can just touch him, he will heal my body. There wasn't a doubt in her mind. Doubt and faith cannot mix. They can't go hand in hand. They're complete opposites. 
They cannot mix. So she makes up her mind to touch Jesus. And she came up behind him and literally reached up and touched one of the tassels that was on his clothes. And immediately Jesus stops. On his way to perform another miracle, he stops dead in his tracks. And he turns around and he says, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you whole. Faith don't quit. He could have said, man, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm going to live with this until the Lord calls me home. There's no hope for healing. I've been dealing with this for 12 years. I've spent every dime I have on doctors going and trying to, to, to handle this issue. I'm weak because of the blood loss. But I'm going to get to Jesus regardless because I am desperate. Nobody else can solve this issue they've tried. See, desperation forces us out of our comfort zone. When, when, when we've tried everything under the sun to deal with a certain situation and we get desperate for God, then we take a step out of our comfort zone. Despite the crowds. Despite the naysayers. Despite getting knocked down and literally having to army crawl, some scholars believe, to Jesus. What are we willing to do to get to him? Or do we take the other side of the road and we say, well, he's got too many people around him. He's too busy. I don't have time for this. I can't reach him. She could have taken that, that, that mindset. And she would have never got her miracle. She would have never received her healing that she needed. Would have never happened. But because she would not stop. And because she was literally desperate. She would not let a little bit of. Of crowd pressure and all this stuff to stop her. She 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 didn't allow the the crowd of people to stop her from getting to Jesus. What are we allowing to stop us from getting to Jesus? I, ultimately, it comes down to until we get to the place that this woman did of absolute desperation, oftentimes we won't move. But it's often when we get desperate that nobody else has the answer. Nobody else can see this issue through we've got to turn to Jesus then we get desperate then we fall on our faces and we start seeking the Lord but she had probably been praying about this for, for a while Lord let him come to my town I've heard about his fame I've heard about his healing 
I've heard about all this stuff. Let him come to my town because I need a touch. Doctors can't solve it. I've spent everything I have. And doctors can't solve it. The Bible says she came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. So she he's facing away from her. She walks up behind or crawls up behind him and reaches up and touches one of these tassels. And it stops Jesus in his tracks. He was being thronged with people, and yet one woman's faith stops him dead in his tracks. One woman's faith. That ought to tell us what he does when faith is activated. He stops everything for that one person. Like I said, he was on his way to Jairus' daughter to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. And stops to perform this miracle for this woman and then goes and raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Another part of scripture says that <clears throat> that Jairus' daughter was sick when this occurrence happened. And while Jesus was healing this woman, word come back to Jairus and she said, they said, your daughter is dead, trouble not the master. And yet, Jesus would go with Jairus into Jairus' house and raise the woman, the girl from the dead. Y'all, there is nothing he cannot do. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. He is our Lord that he with thee. He is. Remember what he told the children of Israel in Exodus when they were when he when he appeared to Moses and Moses said, Who shall I say sent me? And the Lord said, Tell them I am that I am. He's everything we have need of. There's nothing that we need that he's not. You need a healer? He is. You need a friend that sticks closer than a brother? He is. You need... Whatever the case, he is. Or at least he desires to be. But see, oftentimes what happens when we're dealing with an issue, and I can't imagine being this woman, y'all. I can't imagine it. Dealing with an issue for 12 years, and having spent everything you had, and you're not better, but you're rather worse. I don't know how I would have dealt with that. I don't know how I would have... I don't know. But instead of... of, of, of Closing herself off, she hears that Jesus is coming to her town. 
and she hears about his miracles and about what he did. The Bible says, how can they hear? How can they believe unless they hear? See, Jesus desires to meet our every need. But how can he meet our need if we're not being taught what all he can do? If we're not being taught that we can trust him with whatever's going on, whether it be sickness, whether it be whatever the case, we can trust him with it. Because the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Ever. He does not leave one of his children. Yeah, you may be in the backside of the desert with no food and no water. You know what he's going to do? He's going to provide water out of a rock and manna from heaven. You may be like Joseph thrown into a pit and thrown into a prison. You know what he's going to do? He's going to promote you. The Bible says about Joseph that he never complained. The psalmist would say it like this. He was put in chains and fetters in Egypt. While he was in prison and yet never mumbled and complained. He never lost his faith, even though he did not understand currently what was going on. You go and you read Hebrews 11, the Hall of Faith. Church, the majority of these people didn't necessarily see what was going on, what was happening. And I'm sure, just like this woman here, they got desperate. Lord, if you don't do something, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I'm trusting you to provide, but I don't necessarily see how you're going to provide. I need a miracle. I'm bleeding profusely like this woman. I've spent all I had, and I'm not any better. In fact, I'm worse. But she reasoned in her mind, if I can just touch it. And not even him, personally. The hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. And Jesus turned around, turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you whole. See, she believed what Jesus could do even before he touched. she touched him. Touching him was a point of contact for the virtue, for the power to go out of Jesus and into her, to heal her of this issue of blood. See, we all go through roadblocks, church. We all go through things that we don't necessarily understand. Prayerfully, it's not for 12 years, but so we hear that Jesus is passing by. What do we do? What do we do? We look out the window and we see him being thronged with people, which can either add doubt, which to be honest, I tend to think I probably would have had a little bit of doubt. I'm like, Lord, there's people all over the place. I can't even get to you. 
that this woman had been dealing with this for so long and needed relief so bad that she was going to go out and do her best to just touch him. She didn't care at that point what it cost. She had to get to Jesus. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Right? Are we, myself included, sitting on a promise from him about whatever the case? Whether it be healing, whether it, whatever the case. And we've had a roadblock put in front of us that we can't see over, we can't see around, we can't, like, it, it's there. And we feel like we're stuck. We have two choices. Do we continue to seek him, even though there's a roadblock there, like this woman with the issue of blood, whatever it costs, I've got to get to Jesus. There may be a roadblock in front of me, but I'm going to pray until the Lord removes or teaches me to climb over said roadblock. Or do we give up? It's easy to give up because you've been dealing with this for so long. Like, man, it's not his will. I can just give up. I can just live with this the rest of my life. He doesn't desire us to give up, but rather to continue to seek him for the miracle that we need. The question is, do we or do we not? Like I said, there's a choice here. This woman could have said, oh, I can't get to him. I'm not willing to crawl to get to him. I'm not willing to do what it takes to get to him. And she would have lived with this issue the rest of her life. What are we willing to do to get to him? See, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, with his stripes we are healed. But oftentimes... There's a promise, there's, there's, a, there's a space between the promise and the possession. And it's in that space of time between the promise and the possession. JB, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Child, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. But what do we do in the space between? See, this woman had no doubt been praying and seeking God. Do we continue to pray and seek or do we say it's not his will and quit? Do we continue to pray and seek until we hear that Jesus is coming into our town? And then we have another decision to make. Do we get out of the house and go touch him or do we not? Because we he is being thronged with people and there's no way I can get to him. How bad do we want to get to Jesus? Because once desperation hits, desperation does one of two things. It'll drive us to do whatever it takes to get to him, or it will turn us the other direction and we will lose faith. The choice is ours. Do we pursue him or do we not? 
because he's the only one that can provide our miracle that we need. Nobody else can do it. Doctors can't do it. Nobody else can do it. It's just like this woman with the issue of blood, church. She had, she had literally, all her options were gone. She had no more options. Okay, I'm going to take y'all back to the Old Testament. Abraham and Sarah is another prime example of this with Isaac. All hope of the flesh had to die. They couldn't bring this to pass despite Abraham trying with Hagar and Ishmael. They couldn't bring a promise from God to pass, neither can we. We, we, try to, we try to help the Lord. We've all done it. <laughs> Every one of us have tried to help him bring a promise to pass. And it ends up delaying it even more. Once again, Abraham and Isaac. See, we have to learn to trust him and have faith while in the waiting process. You remember the friend? <laughs> Last example, and then I'm closing. Y'all remember the friend in Luke 11 that, that had the friend on his journey that had nothing to set before him? And he goes and sets out to this other friend's house that he knew had bread. In the middle of the night, midnight. And he knocks on the door. And the man from within the house says, My family is with me in bed. I cannot arise and give you. Come back tomorrow. I'll give you all you want tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. The man could have said, okay, we'll come back tomorrow, no big deal. But he didn't. And the Bible says, but because of his importunity, which means he wouldn't stop. He had got to the point he was obnoxious, knocking on the door. Because of it, not because he was his friend, but because of his importunity, he would arise and give him as much as he needeth. And he would. Are we that desperate for God? Are we that desperate to continue to knock on that door until we spiritually get him up? It may not be time for our miracle, but you know what he does? He gives us little breadcrumbs to keep us on the journey so that we don't lose faith. See, his timing is just as important as his will. This is important. But if we stop right in front of our promise, we will never reach our promise because we quit. The Lord does not desire that we stop pursuing the promise. Even though it's taking, Lord, it's taken years. Because one day, he's going to answer that prayer. One day, Jesus, metaphorically speaking, is going to be walking through your town. And then we have another decision. Are we going to get out of the house and go touch him? Or are we going to let him and our miracle leave town without even trying? Faith that will not quit.
church. It is not easy to walk by faith and believe him for what he has spoken to us. Because there is a time and a space between the promise and the possession of said promise. Oftentimes it is years. The question then becomes, will we continue to seek him even though we haven't seen what he's promised us yet? Will we be like the woman with the issue of blood? I've just got to touch him. I've just got to touch him. Remember, remember what he told the Gentile woman? that came and needed, I believe it was a healing for her, or, yeah, I think it was for her. And Jesus turned and he said, it is not meat to feed from the master's table to the dogs, which was the Gentiles. And her response was telling. Her response was, yes, Master, I agree with that, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. In other words, all she wanted was a little bit of crumb. She knew that she had no spiritual right to even approach him because she was a Gentile. But her faith said, he's got my answer. And her faith said, just like this woman with the issue of blood, I may not get a whole piece of bread, but I'm going to get some crumbs off his table. See, we've got to have a determination on the inside of us that says, I will not quit. I may not see it today. I may not see it tomorrow. It may be 20 years from now, but I'm not going to quit. Faith <laughs> that will not quit. Because ultimately, that is Satan's end goal, church. The Bible says in 1 Peter that Satan comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to destroy your faith, and he ultimately wants to kill you. And the only way he can do that is if he can bring can give a can present to your mind so much doubt on the promises of God that you end up losing your faith. We have to have a resolve in us that says I may not see it today. I may not see it tomorrow. But one day I will see everything he has promised me without a shadow of a doubt. And even though at times we do have doubt, the Bible is clear on that. Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Faith that will not quit. I don't care what <clears throat> you're believing him for. Gym material. If you are 100% sure that it's your father that has laid that on your heart to be believing him for, child of God, let me tell you something. You don't ever stop. You continue to pray and seek him until that promise is received. Because if you stop, you will never receive it. This woman would have never been healed had she allowed the crowds and the naysayers to stop her from getting to Jesus. 
we have to be that persistent. Daily. There's a reason Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Choice is ours. Do we continue to pray and seek? Do we continue to study? Or do we say, well, it's not his will. It's not his will. When we know without a shadow of a doubt, in reality it is. It's just taking time for the promise to be received. His timing is just as important as the promise. But we don't want to wait. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the Bible says that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength as eagles. Isaiah 41. Choice is ours. Do we allow circumstances to make us throw in the towel or do we continue to stay and seek his face until we receive what he has promised us? Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask that you strengthen our faith. That you give us a boldness in faith that we know without a shadow of a doubt every promise you have spoken to us will be fulfilled because you are not a man that you should lie. That is the one thing, Father, you cannot do is lie. Every promise will be fulfilled. Father, I ask that you strengthen us in our resolve to be continuing to seek you and to continue to study and pray until we see our miracle. And even though we may have to crawl to you, let us crawl to you just to touch the hem of your garment. Father, draw us closer to you in the waiting process. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I will see y'all Wednesday night.